This council now becomes committee of the whole council to consider the Employment Amendment Bill 2021. Members may refer to the appendix to the script for the debate and voting arrangement for the bill. Members have been informed that the committee will conduct a joint debate on the clauses and amendments, including the amendments to the long title. I now propose the question to you that the following clauses stand part of the bill. Clauses 1 to 3. Honourable Wong Kok Kin, Honourable Kwok Wai Kang and Honourable Chung Kok Pan will propose amendments respectively which seek to amend uh, Cross 1 or Crosses 1 and 3 and a long title. Members may refer to the appendix to the script for details of the amendment. Members may now proceed to a joint debate on the Crosses and Amendment, including the amendments to the long title. I will call upon the three members who have proposed amendments to speak in sequence but they may not move amendments at this stage. Then I will call upon other members to speak. Upon the conclusion of joint debate, the committee will first vote on the cross with no amendments standing part of the bill and then deal with the amendments according to the arrangements set out in the appendix to the script. Mr. Wong Kok Kin. Mr. Kwok Wai Kung. Thank you, Chairman. First, I'd like to speak to raise my opposition to the amendment book by Mr. Chong Kok Ban. As you have heard from the second reading from us, starting from 2022, we are going to have the first amendment, and then for every two years, we have one additional uh, statutory holiday. The whole process would, would, would take us to 2020 to complete. That is too slow. And now Mr. Chong Kok Ban wants to postpone the pace or slow down the pace and that is the first um, amendment will come into force in 2024 and the whole process would take us all the way to 2032. If uh, the amendment is moved uh, to tell us that uh, the uh, employer uh, would just want to uh, Make sure that they don't spend too much money on the wealth on uh, benefits. Uh, then I would say it's not necessary because the image of the employer is already clear to us enough. I have to stress why why I want to move two amendments, two sets of amendments, up, um, moved by me. Uh, the uh, objective is to expedite the process so that the uh, employees who have been disadvantaged will stand to benefit from the amendments. Secondly, to remove the, the relevant uh, discrimination and to achieve equality. Now the government's plan is to align the two sets of holidays up in 10 years. It, they are telling us that we in the government know that this is not fair, this is not equal. But uh, let's uh, do something about it, and in 10 years' time, we'll achieve equality. So how can we not be worried by such a man, uh, an approach? My amendment is that, uh, starting from 2022 all the way to 2026, we have one additional statutory holiday each year. Although Mr. Wong Kok Kin's amendment uh, is, is uh, our move first, and uh, his amendment will be to add uh, five days in three years. We, uh, in, from the labor sector, think that this is most appropriate. But if members representing the business sector or other members think that it's too uh, radical to have uh, five additional holidays in five, five years, in three years rather, then perhaps you should support my amendments, which means that we are going to have one additional holiday each year in five years time there will be five more. I think this is the true, the real equilibrium that we seek. This is really the middle of the road approach. I hope members can support my amendments. Of course, at the end of the day, the employers, the employees want to achieve something very straightforward. So five more holidays in five years time, is it too much? The biggest problem is that uh, there's a big contrast when some other employees are having a holiday, they don't have it. 
So this is the, about uh, re elimination of discrimination. It's also a, a question of uh, removing racial uh, discrimination and to improve the benefits uh, enjoyed by the blue collar uh, workers. I think my amendments represent the best way forward. So please support Mr. Wong Cockin's amendment. If you cannot do that, please support mine. Mr. Wong Cockin. Thank you, Chairman. With regard to this government bill, the business sector doesn't seem to have uh, strong views about it because uh, the proposals presented by the government um, are in their favour. But uh, of course, uh, we who represent the labour sector do not want to do this. Therefore, the four members represent, represent, uh, representing the labour sector are all trying to move amendments. Unfortunately, uh, only uh, my amendments and Mr. Court White Combs have been approved by you, Mr. Chairman. For all four members from the FTU uh, want, had to move amendments because we did anticipate that some of the amendments will not be approved for debate. My proposal is that in three years' time, we are going to have five additional statutory holidays to achieve the objective of alignment. So in December this year, we're going to have the first weekday after Christmas Day as a statutory holiday. And in 2022, we're going to have uh, uh, the uh, birthday of the Buddha, Easter Monday, Good Friday. Uh, in 2023, we're going to have Good Friday and the day following Good Friday. So it's uh, one plus two plus two approach. So, so that after five years, after three years, we have going to have five additional statutory holidays. The government wants to, to increase the number of statutory holidays progressively and in the order suggested by the government. They are saying that our approach is not progressive. Well, not, it's, it's not the case. My proposals are still progressive. It's just that the pace is quickened. We are, we are accused of uh, trying to change the uh, arrangement in the bill. And then we are trying to uh, make it unfair to employers by shortening the time required from eight uh, years to three years. So the government has uh, considered the case of the employer. What about the uh, unfairness caused to the employees? In a second reading debate, I've already touched on the question of whether this would add to the business costs of employers. This uh, concept of align, alignment of two sets of holidays is nothing new as a concept. The labor sector has been asking for this for more than 10 years. There has been, they, have, they have been given ample time to, to make adjustments. And it's not difficult. It's not fair to say that this would uh, only to add to their costs or, or payroll costs. But uh, I would say, I would counter argue that uh, this would mean better quality of life, better work-life balance for employees, and in turn, the employers will be benefited. And with more holidays, uh, employees and their family members uh, will be, have more time to go out and spend and the business sector will stand to benefit from the increase in consumption. I think uh, the, the, the question of uh, additional or increasing business costs or payroll costs is just an excuse. We want to make sure that all employees are treated uh, equally and fairly. And all employees uh, would enjoy quality life. Mr. Chairman, I hope my amendments can be supported by all members in this council. So I submit. Mr. Christopher Chung. Of course, um, members representing the labor sector would like to have the bill passed yesterday 
and uh, the amendments uh, implemented the day before yesterday. The question is the timing. We have to bear in mind the reality. The reality is that uh, we are facing a particular economic situation and the difficulty. We all see, the, see it. COVID-19 uh, epidemic has been with us for one and a half years. We don't know when the, the uh, business activity can be re resumed, whether the border can be reopened. So that therefore, many businesses are still suffering and many will not see the end of the, the, their pride. The tourism industry is a case in point. They have zero revenue for one and a half years. Of course, uh, the SAR government has been giving them some financial assistance, but many have uh, folded up. The fact is, we don't know the economic uh, outlook. We want to reopen our boundary and uh, normal economic activities can resume and the mainland will be able to allow the individual visit, uh, visitors to come to Hong Kong. And now uh, we are going to see uh, an additional burden in terms of increased uh, labor costs. Is it not really affordable that uh, that one additional st statutory holiday be added every two years? Not really unaffordable, but the question is uh, we would like to defer the implementation by uh, one or two years so that uh, the business sector can be given some breathing space because we don't not right now we don't know when business will become normal again and there are outbreaks in other countries and the uh, even the vaccination rate is not high in other countries we see many uh, variant strains of the virus appearing in different countries, there are different variants. Although we have been doing a, a, a good job in safeguarding our city, uh, we still have more than 20 cases of uh, these uh, variant uh, virus. And even Macau is not willing to open up the, the in tourism industry with Hong Kong. Therefore, I want the commencement of this bill to be deferred by one year. It's not a big problem. The labor sector say that they have been uh, asking for this for more than 10 years. So one more year of waiting is not really a big deal. We have to understand what the kind of uh, economic reality we are facing. I hope my amendment can be uh, accepted and the bill be deferred by one year. Does any other member wish to speak? Mr. Lok Xiong Hong. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I really want to support Mr. Wong Kok Kin and Mr. Kok Wei Kong's amendments. Mr. Wong's amendments in particular well, it's a very mild one, so uh, the there is no amendment to the um, effective date of uh, the amendment involving the birthday of the Buddha. It's just that she he is advancing the um, implementation day of um, the holiday involving. Um, the first weekday after Christmas Day and also Easter Monday by uh, one year to 2021 and 2022 respectively and uh, for the uh, holidays uh, involving Good Friday and the f day following Good Friday advanced to 2023 so that employees can enjoy extra holidays at an earlier stage. Well, um, in uh, 
1875, uh, the Let's Go back then uh, put in place uh, the um, uh, the um, legislation governing statutory holidays. Of course, uh, it uh, was discriminatory against uh, the uh, employees, uh, given that it was a colonial government. And then in 1875, there was an act involving uh, banks so that employees of banks uh, could enjoy uh, extra holidays. So uh, because uh, these um, uh, the banks and education institutions, etc., were closed, and their employees enjoyed an extra day of holiday. But nowadays, uh, we have uh, all sorts of um, industries, and we have uh, white collars, blue collars, and gray collars. And I think the boundaries are, are between the two. The boundary between the two is getting blurred. For instance, uh, you uh, for people who um, make a living by uh, writing, um, by using a pen, then you call them white collars. But then many journalists out there, well, uh, they make a living by uh, doing write-ups, but they are only enjoying statutory holidays. So we should align uh, the number of uh, general holidays and statutory holidays in order to benefit our employees. Um, the uh, business sector is worried, but they have failed to tell us what is the extra cost to them. And for some members here who are um, uh, bosses themselves, uh, they are telling us that the extra cost to them would only be minimal. So I'd like to appeal to members from the business sector, please uh, help us to expedite the implementation of uh, the proposals so that uh, the government can also agree to our amendments and s there can be harmony in society. This will be a win-win situation for the workers and employers, and this can promote uh, harmony in families. I urge members to support Mr. Wong Kwok Kins and Mr. Kwok Wai Kung's amendments. And uh, I'd like to uh, comment on the strategy of the two amendments. Now, the best um, is for Mr. Wong Kwok Kins' amendment to be passed. If um, members have worries, then you can consider Mr. Kwok Wai Kung's relatively milder amendments. You may uh, consider his proposal a bit more considerate to employers. Uh, we very much hope that members can support FTU's amendments. Mr. Shuka Fai. Now, uh, these amendments uh, will serve to shorten the um, implementation time frame uh, shortened now for Mr. Felix Jones' amendment. We'd like to postpone the commencement date by one year. Now, we all understand the reasons are behind Mr. Felix Jones' amendment because of the black clad violence and the epidemic. All industries have um, been dealt a heavy blow. You may think that business has improved the past uh, few months, but then uh, Many um, uh, uh, many um, businesses uh, that uh, were forced to suspend business were are heavily indebted. So that's why we have Mr. Felix Jones' uh, proposal to defer the uh, implementation day or commencement day by one year. I support uh, Mr. Felix Jones' uh, view, and of course, I cannot support uh, the. Uh, FTU's proposals. Mr. Wong Kwok Kin or Mr. Tung Lee Zee said that uh, they are all for uh, equality and uh, instead of uh, fighting for employment rights. How do you define equality? Now, white collar 
and a blue collar worker have different entry qualifications. Now, uh, for white collars, uh, they may uh, need to be degree holders um, before they can join a particular trade. And for blue collars, well, uh, they may have uh, to be physically fitter, and um, the uh, educational qualifications is are not so demanding. So. White collar workers have spent so much time uh, in their education. Is it fair that uh, if uh, the two types of workers get the same number of holidays? Now, if you do not call this uh, employment uh, rights or benefits, I'm afraid I back to differ. Whether I support more employment benefits as a separate issue. Of course, I want everyone in Hong Kong uh, to work uh, Fewer hours and make more money, but uh, because uh, this is a capitalist society, I'm afraid that cannot be the case. Now we we'll only talk about 1.2 million of white uh, or blue collar workers. They will enjoy. Uh, some say that uh, they will enjoy more. Uh, employment benefits and the impact on the business sector would not be too high. But I have uh, received uh, calls from friends that for white, their white collar employees, uh, they are, are telling uh, their employers that now I, if uh, blue collar workers are getting 17 days like me, then perhaps I should get a high pay or a few more days of holidays. So when one group of employees get some more statutory holidays, then the other uh, type of employees may ask for more employment benefits. So the cost to employers are bound to increase. I hope uh, you can take care of the situation of the micro and SMEs. Thank you. Does any member wish to speak? If not, can I invite uh, the Secretary for Labour and Welfare to respond? And after that, I will invite uh, our members who are moving their CSAs to speak. Mm, Chairman, I urge our members to oppose uh, the amendments by Mr. Wong Kok Kin, Mr. Kok Wai Kung, and Mr. Chong Kok Pan. Mr. Wong Kok Kin and Mr. Kok Wai Kung will move uh, separate amendments to change the pace of um, our reform. While they may differ in details, but they will expedite the pace of uh, what's in my bill. Mr. Wong Kokin would like to advance the implementation date of the first extra SH to uh, this year. And then uh, the day uh, for uh, alignment will uh, be 2023. And as for Mr. Kwai Kung's amendments, the first group will um, advance it, advance it to 2026, and the other uh, is to 2013, the first of January. While uh, it has uh, suppressed uh, the commencement date of some statutory holidays, so that in three years there will at least be four additional statutory holidays, and the pacing is uneven. Uh, according to Mr. Wong's amendment, the uh, first weekday after Christmas Day will be the first uh, extra statutory holiday. This has changed the sequence of um, what's in the bill. <coughs> I'd like to say that we have uh, made uh, um, the above day of the Buddha as the first day to be added because it is just one single day and it will be easier for the business sector employers and uh, FDHS uh, families easier to uh, cope with. I have to stress that in adding the number of uh, statutory holidays, we must take care of the interests of uh, the employers and employees at the current economic situation. We have already uh, struck a proper balance after considering these factors. I think the proposal in the bill is even and gradual, and uh, there will be one extra day every two years. And uh, another proposal would uh, upset the balance of course, um, I hope that the epidemic will continue to ease and our economy can recover. But there is no guarantee 
I, of course, want uh, everything to uh, be okay for economy, but there is no guarantee. And um, once the bill is passed, then uh, all employees will enjoy 17 statutory holidays. And I think um, employers would also provide benefits more favorable than that of the EO in order to retain manpower. The government has to consider the proposed pace and also the impacts on the micro and SMEs, in particular families that employ FDHs. They need time to adapt to the new arrangement and the manpower arrangement. And if we move ahead too fast, it will be counterproductive. And now we are increasing the number of SHS in uh, over a long time, and I think this is appropriate, so that all employees will enjoy the same number of statutory holidays, and it is a major improvement. Mr. Felix Jones' proposal would like to defer the commencement date uh, from 2022 to 2032, 2024 to 2032. There's proposal is in the exactly opposite direction of the amendments by Mr. Wong Kok Kin and Mr. Kok Wai Kin. And um, this has been discussed in the Labour Advisory Board. As I said, the government has the responsibility to uh, work on the legislative work, and we have to give due consideration uh, to um, improving the need to improve employment rights and also the um, affordability of the business sector, and I urge members to be pragmatic and support the government's proposal so that over a million workers in Hong Kong can enjoy an extra statutory holiday next year. And I urge members to oppose all CSAs from members. Should any of uh, the uh, CSAs be passed, and very uh, unreluctantly, uh, uh, very uh, reluctantly, I will have no choice but to withdraw the bill before its third reading. Thank you. Mr. Wong Kok Kin, would you like to speak again? More than 1.2 million workers wanted to be um, treated equally, and I hope that my amendments would be passed. Mr. Kwai Kwang, do you wish to speak again? No, Chairman. Mr. Felix Chong, do you wish to speak again? The committee now votes. First, on the clause with no amendments staying part of the bill, I put a question to you. That clause two stand part of the bill. Will those in favor please raise their hands? Those against please raise their hands. I think the question is agreed by a majority of the members present. I declare the motion passed. This committee now deals with the amendments. The voting arrangements are set out in the appendix to the script. Before I call upon Mr. Wong Kokin to move his amendments, I remind members that if Mr. Wong Kokin's amendments are passed, both Mr. Kwai Kang and Mr. Felix Chong may not move their amendments. Mr. Wong Kok Kin, you may move your amendments. Chairman, I move my amendments to amend clauses 1 and 3 as set out in the appendix to the script. I propose the question to you that Mr. Wong Kok Kin's amendments be passed. I now put the question to you as stated. Will those in favor please raise your hands? Those against please raise your hands. I think the question is not agreed by majority of each of the two groups of members present. I declare the amendments negatived. I now put the question to you that clause three stand apart of the bill. Will those in favor please raise your hands? Those against, please raise your hands. I think the question is agreed by majority of the members present. I declare the motion passed. Before I call upon Mr. Kwai Kwan to move his first set of amendments, I remind members that if Mr. Kwai Kwan's first set of amendments is passed, he may not move his second set of amendments, and Mr. Felix Chong also may not move his amendments. Mr. Kwai Kwan, you may move your first set of amendments. Chairman, I move my first set of amendments to amend Clause 1 as set out in the appendix to the script. I propose a question to you that Mr. Kwai Kwan's first set of amendments be passed. I now put the question to you as stated. Will those in favor please raise their hands? Those against, please raise your hands. 
I think the question is not agreed by a majority of each of the two groups of members present. I declare the amendments negatived. Before I call upon Mr. Koi Kung to move his second set of amendments, I remind members that if Mr. Koi Kung's second set of amendments is passed, Mr. Fix Chung may not move his amendments. Mr. Koi Kung, you may move your second set of amendments. Chairman, I move my second set of amendments to amend Clause 1 as set out in the appendix to the script. I propose the question to you that Mr. Koi Kung's second set of amendments be passed. I now put the question to you as stated. Will those in favor please raise your hands? Those against, please raise your hands. I think the question is not agreed by a majority of each of the two groups of members present. I declare the amendments negatived. Mr. Felix Chung, you may move your amendments. Chairman, I move my amendments to amend Clause 1 as set out in the appendix to the script. I propose the question to you that Mr. Felix Chung's amendment be passed. I now put the question to you as stated. Will those in favor please raise your hands? Those against, please raise your hands. I think the question is not agreed by a majority of each of the two groups of members present. I declare the amendments negatived. I now put the question to you that Clause 1 stand part of the bill. Will those in favor please raise your hands? Those against, please raise your hands. I think the question is agreed by a majority of the members present. I declare the motion passed. All the proceedings on the um, Employment Amendment Bill 2021 have been concluded in Committee of the Whole Council. Council now resumes. Secretary for Labour and Welfare. President, I now report to the Council that the Employment Amendment Bill 2021 has been passed by Committee of the Whole Council without amendment. I move the motion that this Council adopts the report. I now propose the question to you that the Secretary's motion be passed. Those in favor, please raise their hands. Those against, please raise their hands. I think the question is agreed by a majority of members present. I declare the motion passed. Third reading. Employment Amendment Bill 2021.